Steel concrete composite structures combine the desirable properties of both steel and concrete. The resulting structures are cost effective, efficient and suitable for modern construction. In this presentation, I will share finite element modeling of shear connection behavior in a push test using profile sheeting. What is a push test? A push test is a replica of a, a beam and we use push test to determine the shear resistance of shear connectors. What are shear connectors? Shear connectors are metal fixing that we weld at top of the steel beam and on top of that we pour concrete uh, and underneath we have steel deck in combination it provides a composite structure which is lighter than ordinary steel or concrete structure on its own this is part of my conference presentation presented at uh, international conference in cape town south africa uh, and i was a phd student back in 2010 and i will share my experience with you now this is how my today's presentation is organized. Uh, first introduction, then objectives, finite element modeling, then validation of finite element modeling, parametric study. And finally, I will uh, conclude my presentation with some concluding remarks. In composite beams, the shear connection is ensured by use of headed shear connectors. These shear connectors are metal fixings that we weld on top of the beam so that the concrete and steel they do not slip against each other and push tests are most commonly used to determine shear connection behavior although realistically beam tests should be used to uh, test the shear connection but push tests are short replica of beam tests limited research exists on beam with two shear studs or double shear studs most previous studies they have assumed that the sheeting and the concrete they are tied together so all elements are tied together but this is not a realistic way to model a composite structure in this research i will try to model a structure where all elements have frictional uh, contact and they can move against each other which will be the real life situation and it is more realistic way to model these uh, structures post failure behavior is not modeled in the past as well at least at that time in 2010 now the research is more uh, developed post failure means that the load reaches at the top point and then comes down now this is really very important because it tells us how much load a structure can take. If the load deflection curve simply goes up and does not stop, then it's very difficult to say where is that failure load. In this research, I will determine the failure load of these shear studs and from that we can find out the characteristic load. The objectives of this research are to develop finite element modeling and to predict the uh, shear capacity of shear stud uh, and to validate the model against a set of experiments and once the models are validated then we carry out parametric study based on the concrete strength the depth of the slab and profile sheeting rib width this is a summary of push test uh, setup it's been taken by hicks 2007 and i will put copy of the presentation in the description there will be a link for both the presentation and the paper a beam is 254 254 by 89 uh, ukc and she has is, is the standard one which is 19 by 100 millimeter and profile sheeting dimensions are we used uh, 60 mm profile sheeting so depth is 60 width is 150 millimeter thickness 0.9 and all shear studs were welded in favorable position in pairs now what is favorable position and you will see it in next slide in olden days we used to have profile sheetings where we could weld a shear stud at the center of profile sheeting but now we have these protruding ribs at the center of 
the profile in most modern profile sheetings, which makes the shear stud to be welded off center. So when we are applying shear loading to the beam, if the concrete volume is larger in front of shear stud, then we call it as favorable position. If concrete volume is smaller in front of shear stud, then we call it unfavorable uh, position. In North America, they call it as uh, weak and strong position as well. Central position is not possible in most of modern steel decks. So it means that we will be using either favorable or unfavorable. But here in this research, we have used favorable positions. This is the detail of finite element model. It was matched really very carefully so that the meshes of connecting parts they match with each other and the beam is modeled as a top flange only because modeling the entire the beam is not required because only top flange of the section is connected with the shear studs and other elements and then i also modeled the welded wire mesh which you can see over here i took the concrete slab out uh, so that you can see the entire configuration of the uh, model otherwise if they were embedded together it's difficult to see which element is which the geometry was created using abacus uh, cae shear stud steel beam and concrete slab all of them are matched using brick elements c3 d8 r and wedge c3 d6 r reduced integration element we use reduced integration element to eliminate any shear locking in elements especially in case of concrete when the parts are deep normally shear locking happens which does not give right results so that's why we use reduced integration elements wire mesh is modeled using 3d truss element t3 d2 profile sheeting is modeled using thin shell elements and push test is analyzed using abacus explicit and quasi static solution is ensured by using slow load application this is very important when we have a lot of contacting surfaces interacting together we cannot use static procedures static procedures will almost certainly give you convergence difficulties to avoid those convergence difficulties I use explicit procedure, dynamic explicit procedure. But now you would argue that if you are applying dynamic loading to a static problem, how do you ensure the results? The way forward is that we apply load really very slowly so that the effects obtained are static and we compare the energies. This slide shows boundary conditions and load applications. Surface 1 is restricted uh, from moving in x direction because of symmetry. I assumed a symmetry on the bottom flange of the beam. Surface 3 is prevented from moving in z direction. A uniform displacement is applied on loading surface and total load applied is measured as reaction on that loading surface. Constraints and contact interactions. Uh, I used contact pair algorithm to define contact between steel deck and slab. And tangential behavior is defined by penalty frictional formulation with coefficient of friction of 0.5. And default normal behavior is assumed uh, using hard contact pressure over closure in abacus. Now, what was the contact between stud and slab again i use a similar approach i use contact pair algorithm and the friction was uh, 0.5 and default normal behavior was assumed now here how do you decide which surface to take as master and which surface to take slave here the concrete volume is quite a lot it means that stiffness of concrete is going to be higher than shear studs normally we take the stronger material as master and weaker material as slave but here because stiffness of concrete is very high that's why i took concrete as master and steel or shear studs as 
a slave surface and this is really very important now beam and steel deck contact is not very uh, important so uh, tangential behavior was assumed frictionless and default normal behavior was assumed now how do you assume a contact between shear stud and steel deck in real life situation uh, these are welded shear studs are welded through the steel deck to the beam and this kind of behavior is modeled by tying nodes around shear stud uh, with the steel deck and mesh was embedded inside the uh, concrete embedded constraint was used to put mesh inside concrete material models i used modulus of elasticity of 200 gigapascal for all steel components steel beam was treated as linear elastic material because its behavior does not affect the results at all so there's no point in having it as uh, elastic plastic on the other hand steel deck shear stud and wire mesh they were taken as elastic plastic uh, materials which means that in a stress strain curve the load will go up and then it will be perfectly uh, plastic so in yield stress of each component steel deck wire mesh and shear stud is taking as 350 460 and 513.5 respectively and these are taken from the paper uh, hicks uh, 2007 which i mentioned a bit earlier material model for concrete is really very important and i tried different models like drucker prager model and elastic plastic and various other models for concrete but they did not give proper results concrete damage plasticity on the other hand it can model concrete crushing it can model concrete cracking and cracking is really very important over here that's the reason i used concrete damage plasticity model here we will define elastic properties plastic properties compressive behavior and tensile behavior material model for concrete and elastic properties the elastic properties are uh, defined using euro code 2 equations and where fcm is the, the mean concrete uh, compressive cylinder strength and poisons ratio was assumed to be 0.2 and density 2400 kg per meter cube and dilation angle for all models was taken as 40 degrees this is the stress strain behavior determined from the model which i mentioned earlier and further details of equation are given in the paper the tensile behavior is really very important and we have to model the softening behavior of cracked concrete in tension and we specified it in terms of fracture energy using exponential function uh, as proposed in this uh, paper these were the equation that we used to come up with crack opening displacement and we used these uh, parameters after using these equations, this is tensile stress versus cracking displacement behavior and this is really very important and it will enable the model to uh, have cracking and cracking is really very important over here and this is the tensile damage parameter this parameter equal to one means that the concrete has completely cracked it's zero means there is no crack uh, at all so at a displacement of 1.2 millimeter it is assumed that concrete has completely cracked the results showed a close match between experiments so finite element the results were very close the only difference was that in post failure range the uh, stiffness is not the same as you would get in experiment after cracking the a specimen failed suddenly in experiment on the other hand in a numerical model it went ahead and it was slightly higher and the reason is unknown why why can't we do it exactly the same because this is a numerical modeling this can't be entirely the same but probably if we would have defined more crack widths like crack width is going to be five millimeter or more then maybe it would have come down and if we could have defined the properties of uh, steel elements as uh, damage properties as well then it could have uh, come down but this is something we would consider in our next research 
Now here I compared it with various experiments and uh, you can see here that results from finite element model and experiment they match really very closely. Now these failure modes are really very interesting. The red uh, colors indicate uh, cracking and on the right side you can see experiment and around two shear studs it can be observed that in finite element model the cracking is happening in the same way as you would get it in experiments and this was really important uh, take away from this research that's how i got my phd and now i work as a lecturer at a university and this led to a lot of publications uh, as well almost four journal papers and five conference publications from my phd work Again, uh, you can see failure cones around shear studs. This is a typical failure pattern observed in experiments and this is mimicked in finite element model as well. Again, here you can see that how steel deck is being detached from concrete slab. And this is exactly similar as you would get it in experiment. At the bottom, you can see experiment. At top, you can see finite element model. And this was one of the key conclusion of research is that this research was able to model the separation between steel deck and concrete slab. Then I carried out parametric study by changing the concrete strength. Dashed line indicates euro code values and solid line indicates finite element model the results are very close and then i also model different slab depths you can see when we increase the depth of the slab the shear capacity of the shear stud is increasing as well and then i tried different average widths uh, starting from 100 150 and uh, 200 you can see that when we increase the width of the rib then shear capacity of the stud increases. This brings me to uh, conclusions. Post failure behavior has never been modeled at that time in 2010. And this study modeled the post failure behavior, which is really very crucial for determining the shear capacity, slip and the failure mode. The results from FE modeling were very close to the experiments, which means that the model really worked very well and shear connector resistance increases with the increase in concrete strength slab depth and rib width the model developed in this study is very useful in understanding the behavior of headed studs in composite beams with profile sheeting thanks for your time today and i will see you in my next presentation if you have any questions put them down in the comments and i will put all the links down below in description as well i will see you in my next presentation thank you numerical modeling of real life experiments saves time and money in this presentation i'm going to show you numerical modeling of steel end plate bolted beam to column joints using abacus first i want to give some background to the work what are simple and